gosh, isn't it a burden being massively more intelligent than everyone else? It's such a bore to have to listen to plebs who only want to talk about superhero movies and who to vote for and whether or not you're planning to take your foot off their throat anytime soon. And meanwhile, you can only maintain interest by masturbating furiously while solving New York Times crosswords with your free hand. And then when you have to decide on what order to do games for your silly internet review show, you have to face the fact that most of the audience would probably rather hear about the robot policeman shooting people in the testicles than the game you're more interested in talking about, The Talos Principle 2, which doesn't contain a single forcibly liquidised bollock, but is a game for clever people, which is, in the words of Ernest Hemingway, really pussy juice milkingly good. And I wish more people were talking about it, because it's exactly the kind of thing a sequel should be. For one thing, it's the title of the last game but with a two on the end, which is always a positive start. None of this Talos Principle Chronicles or Talos Principle The Next Generation twattery. Crow Team have their account books in tight motherfucking order. More importantly, it's a sequel that successfully jumps off from the original to explore new horizons. I would say it's important to have played the first game to fully grasp the plot, but thankfully Crow Team have made it easy to deduce the intended order. Does it have a two on the end? No, we'll play that one first, you idiot. Old school. Nice. In Talos Principle 1, we were an AI in a virtual world, going through a process to develop our sentience, which for reasons I wasn't entirely clear on, involved solving a hundred million line of sight laser reflecting puzzles. Do you want us to explain it to your yards? That's okay, Talos Principle 1. It's no trouble, we wrote like 900 in-universe text logs explaining the philosophical link between sentience and filling the backs of cereal boxes. I'm sure you did, Talos Principle 1. I don't have time to read them now. Could you pop them in my novelty inbox that's designed to look like a dustbin? Talos Principle 2 opens with a brace of Talos Principle 1 laser puzzles to remind you where you came from before you wake up and discover that you are the newest member of an entire society of robot people founded by the protagonist of the last game, who, devoid of any physical needs beyond power generation, which apparently only a few of them need to worry about, have founded an intellectualist society based around art, philosophy and coexistence with nature. But your arrival sparks a sudden debate over whether your species has a moral duty to expand and explore the cosmos, or to not impose their will upon a natural universe to which they are not automatically entitled. And yes, 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 sorry to interrupt, but I'm actually just a knobhead who likes solving line of sight laser puzzles and I'm worried I came in the wrong door. We're getting to that. The robots are shaken when, at your birthday come gender reveal party thing, a message from a faraway island appears that may represent some hitherto unknown intelligence. And when you go to investigate as part of the official expedition, you discover a giant futuristic pyramid, and the only way to open it, unlock its secrets, and indeed define the very future of your civilization is to solve a hundred million line of sight laser reflecting puzzles. Oh, thank Christ for that. I was worried we were going to let the purpose of existence and nature of reality get in the way of important things, like completing the book of word searches I brought along for the flight. Let's not dwell on the puzzles, because they're just fine. A fully laden conveyor belt of tightly designed intellectual challenges that employ a variety of different elements, but individually remain deceptively simple until you actually try to take the most direct approach, and realise there's a cocking great statue of an upraised middle finger or whatever right in the path of the laser, but after about ten minutes of fiddling my brain shifts perspective with an audible plop and I figure out the solution. So the puzzle aspect is as solid as a gameplay core needs to be and gave me all the necessary amount of brain boners. The only thing marring it is that while the gorgeous expansive environments provide a delightful sightseeing tour when you're first going through the mandatory puzzles, when you're looking for the optional puzzles and collectibles they become an annoyingly large space to traipse back and forth across, like you're chasing your lost dog around the British Museum. But as you might have already surmised, it's the setting and the story that are putting the really impressive work in on this one. Did I already mention the entire vacuum cleaner seducing city of intelligent robots you can entirely optionally explore before you even get to the puzzly bit, full of jaw-dropping architecture and deep conversations and a memorial to cats for some reason, and even while you're slogging away at the puzzle coalface you continue to get a sense of the larger world you're part of because you're plugged into in-universe social media, full of bored hyper-intelligent beings with nothing to do all day but watch what you're doing through your eyes and argue about the implications. It's like streaming except the audience consists entirely of Greek philosophers rather than incoherent shit pipes who keep donating small amounts of money to make you say the phrase willy fiddlers over and over again. There's so much fucking dialogue. The first game's bad case of text log syndrome has spread to the fucking spinal column, but I love the depth of philosophy it explores. Broadly, the argument dividing the robots is whether to expand and follow the natural drive of living things, or to break the cycle that doomed the original flawed genital-owning humanity and just live out their days sniffing each other's exhaust pipes and thinking about stuff. But each side has multiple nuanced takes, and when you're asked to make your position clear, there's usually around 19 different options. Maybe you agree with the conservatives because you think physical expansion isn't necessary for intellectual evolution, or out of a semi-spiritual appreciation for the purity of the natural world, or because you're afraid of the rampaging crab warriors from Splurglenox Prime, or maybe you go through every conversation picking the option to say, I don't fucking care, I'm just a sophisticated dildo on legs. Talos Principle 2 is great as both a puzzle game and extended think piece, but I suspect the reason it passed under the radar is because it's also not the least bit sexy. Disco Elysium is a game that's super smart while also being funny and full of sexy drama, and Talos Principle 2 only gets as far as the first part. It's so dry and emotionless, the robots argue but never get heated. They all make their positions clear and agree to disagree, and whatever direction your choices take the civilization in at the end, everyone accepts as a basically positive step. It's worth considering that good science fiction can tackle the big questions and have a few exciting laser gun fights as well. Planet of the Apes is what draws the crowd, not Planet of the Nice Reasonable People. 